Every time the world heavyweight wrestling champion signs a contract, he knows that he's up against top competition. They have everything to gain and nothing to lose. This competition at a recent signing, the contract says Ted DiBiase, an outstanding opponent, Harley. Teddy DiBiase, Bill, as you know, is one of the finest young athletes in wrestling today. And sooner or later, down the pike, Teddy DiBiase is probably going to hold the world's heavyweight title. But that does not mean that it's going to happen right now. I said to myself, sooner or later, race, you're going to be world champion. Well, it took 14 years before it happened the first time. Teddy, just because you're in a position that you've got all kinds of people talking about you, ballooning your head to where you cannot find a hat that's big enough to fit it, telling you that you are capable of being the world champion, telling you that you're capable of beating the world champion at any time. Well, don't let that big head overload your backside because, buddy, when you come for this, you're coming for the very best. You're coming for a man that's going to stop at absolutely nothing to keep what he's got. I've been in your position. I know where you're coming from. You're not going to stop at anything either. If you did, you don't deserve to be in there. You come, Dibiase, you bring it all and do exactly what you can do and do it as often as you can possibly do it because I'm going to be there on the exact opposite side doing what I can do better than any other man on the face of the earth. And that's wrestle, buddy. I'm going to be in there all the way. I'm not going to lay down and play dead for you or any other human being. I don't care how good a young wrestler you are. I'm the most fantastic, for the want of a better expression, old wrestler that ever walked in that ring. I am the king of that squared circle. I am the man of the hour. I'm the man that can say he can beat any man in the world because the top of the buckle says it for me. DiBiase, when you come for me, please come prepared for that man. Charlie and Bob Brown against Paul Orndorff and Ted DiBiase. Well, this could be, should be interesting. Orndorff and, and Ted DiBiase. Paul's probably a little thinner here than what he uh, wound up being. Uh, and I guess he might say the same thing as myself, but although that shot there didn't look like it, did it? Uh, Teddy and Orndorff, back in, at this point in time, were both wrestling for Leroy McGurk uh, and Bill Watts out of Oklahoma. And Bulldog was around the Kansas City area with Geigel O'Connor and myself. Uh, I think at the end of this match, uh, we don't want to give that away already, do we? We'll watch it for a while. <clears throat> it's a good ending, though. But Ted, Teddy was a, a, a fabulous young wrestler. His father died in my arms in uh, Lubbock, Texas, about oh, five, six years ahead of this, maybe a little longer. Uh, that's how far back Teddy and myself go. He was like maybe. 10, 11, 12 years old when I first met him. And Orndorff was a fabulous football player. Uh, he turned down several different opportunities to play pro ball because this is what he'd always wanted to do all of his life. And he was just a phenomenal athlete Look at a great you're, you're, bridge right here. Oh yeah, some of the things that he could do, strength-wise, was unreal, and just got stronger as the years went along. Uh, he was up around the New York area in the latter part of his career as Mr. Wonderful, 
And if ever any individual could say that about themselves, Paul Orndorff was one of them. But again, uh, you're around, around the uh, Missouri area and St. Louis being a part of it, and I'm fairly sure this tape here is from St. Louis. They had to deal with me while they were out here and I wasn't all that easy to deal with most of the time. <laughs> yeah, this is a televised match from Wrestling at the Chase. Wrestling at the Chase is probably the most recognizable of all television uh, ever shot. I, I've been all over the world countless times and I, more people asked you about wrestling at the chase and then they do any venue that you've ever been, whether it be Madison Square Gardens, the Cow Palace, or any of those. Wrestling at the chase was probably viewed by more people than, than anyone any other place. Had a pretty decent head but back then. Huh? Yeah, you use those quite a bit. I'll see Bulldog Bob Brown sneaking in or trying to. He, w he was a master of facial expressions when he was either being punished or punishing with a, a wrist lock or what have you. Uh, he and Geigel, I think, are two masters of, of really using their faces to tell what's going on. Well, Bulldog was the type of guy that he didn't... Uh, he was a Dick the Bruiser style guy, only not near as strong or as rugged as Dick, but Brown came at you full throttle, straight on, and didn't really back up at nothing. Uh, him and Geigel were tag team partners for a lot of years, and they were champions for, for a lot of years, but as, as you can see there, Brown, when he finishes one thing, he's right back on it. He gives you no opportunity to to rest. And this is one of his favorite, but no, he didn't do it. The kick in the back, guarantee if he catch you and you weren't paying attention, he'd knock the wind right out of you with that kick in the back. Well, he's also an old ring pro, as, as, were, yes. as were you at keeping the illegal activities on the blind side of the ref. Well, there was a kick in the back. You always got to remember, Chris, that you had a four count to be disqualified. And anything that you wanted to do in between uh, zero and four was theoretically legal, right? Right. People didn't appreciate it. Uh, and again, even the, the ring there, you can see there's no movement in that ring. I don't know where they came up with those two rings, but it shortened my career by probably halfway. And here we have Ted, Ted DiBiase making a run at you. Yeah. Ted's a great guy. There's the kick. I always told him if he was kicking a soccer ball, it'd definitely go 100 yards. You know what Teddy's doing nowadays? I've heard that he has a ministry going. He's an evangelist. He travels all over the country and all over the world. He was in, uh, him and Greg Valentine, believe it or not, were in uh, India just a few weeks ago. There's another reason why my back is fused. Back drops onto the concrete floor. Your flying headbutts can't have helped any. No, uh, when I had the back fused, I went in, they were actually looking at the neck and then you know, that didn't come out the way we planned it. <laughs> Anyhow, they were actually looking at fusing the neck and they bent uh, four needles trying to get into my low back. And they wound up uh, fusing the back and letting the neck go, and so far it's worked out fine. 
the back kind of alleviated the neck pain. Now I think we're into a part of the match where you guys pretty much have your way with Orndorff. Yeah. Orndorff's the type of guy that, that doesn't even know the word quit. It's not even in his vocabulary. So regardless of what we were doing to him, he's going to be hanging right in there. Paul, later on in his career, ran the uh, young talent department for uh, WCW. And a lot of guys came into that, uh, everybody refers to them as wrestling schools. Uh, the Japanese refer to them as dojos, but once the once they were in there with Paul, they were going to get their rear ends worked off. It was every day. There was no in-between. There's no day off except Sunday. And when they finished, they had to clean the whole place. One of my guys is sitting over here beside us now watching this as we're doing it. I don't think you ever did get into that cleaning part, did you? He's shaking his head no eyes. <laughs> But it is kind of uh, fun watching these things. It takes you back a long way. Now Ted DiBiase is fresh and he's in the and ring. There's the pin. That guaranteed DiBiase a shot at the uh, NWA World's title in St. Louis. <laughs> 